Hello folks, uh, welcome to the Astroform channel and thanks for tuning in. In this particular video I'm going to mention 7 beginner tips I wish I knew when I started my astrophotography hobby a couple of years ago. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So hi there wonderful person, if you're new to the channel my name is Vido Oerlemans and I'm an amateur astrophotographer living in Utrecht, the Netherlands, where I try to perform my astrophotography from a light polluted backyard. If you're interested in astrophotography, please consider subscribing to my channel by clicking on my hoodie. Highly appreciate it. And let's move on with the video. So the main reason why I'm making this video is that yeah, I felt quite overwhelmed myself when I first started astrophotography a couple of years ago. There's so much information out there and you need to make so many decisions on for instance the right kind of equipment you need to get started, so what kind of mount do you need, what kind of telescope is a good telescope to start your astrophotography, what kind of camera would you need and other gear and then also you have to learn how to use that equipment of course, so how to set it up, uh, how to accurately track objects in the night sky, how to image those objects and how to post process them using several software tools. So I thought I would make this video in which I will show you seven beginner tips that hopefully will save you some time and some frustrations that I have experienced myself over the years. So let's get into that first tip. So the first beginner tip I have for you is to buy a so-called German equatorial mount to start your astrophotography hobby. A mount is basically just a piece of equipment you can put your telescope and your camera on and a mount is able to slew to objects in the night sky and track those objects throughout the night. Now you want to specifically look out for a German equatorial mount or an EQ mount in short because those mounts are able to compensate for the Earth's rotation and that means that you can accurately track the paths of deep sky objects you want to image throughout the night from any location on Earth. Now you don't want to buy just any kind of equatorial mount, so I actually have made a video on excellent beginner equatorial mounts that are on the astrophotography market today to start your astrophotography hobby and I will link to that video in the description below. Uh, but just take into account that you might want to look out for a mount that includes for instance a computerized go-to system. This basically means that the mount can automatically slew to objects in the night sky and it will automatically start tracking those objects. You also want a mount that includes an auto guiding option because auto guiding it allows you to very accurately track objects in the night sky. I will talk about that later on in the video. You also want a mount that has a so-called ASCOM option. An ASCOM connectivity option because then you can actually connect your mount to a computer and use a lot of astronomy and astrophotography software that has been developed throughout the years to help you track and image objects in the night sky. And last but certainly not least, you want an equatorial mount that has a payload capacity of about 10 kilograms or 22 pounds. So you can actually mount a telescope and a camera and perhaps some other tracking gear on your mount without running into like capacity issues when this mount is tracking objects in the night sky. So a second beginner tip I have for you is to buy the right kind of telescope. And of course there are a lot of different opinions out there, so I will just give you mine. And I would advise you to start your astrophotography hobby with one of these. This is an apochromatic lens-based refractor. And um, yeah, first of all, these apochromatic refractors, they are able to provide you with a high quality picture of deep sky objects. So that's of course the most important thing. You want a high quality so-called aberration free picture of deep sky objects and these telescopes, they can provide you with that. Now, second of all, uh, the apochromatic refractor, you can see they have a pretty short focal length. So when you look at the more affordable options, uh, these telescopes, they have a focal length up to 500 millimeters at most or less. And actually this will provide you with a relatively wide, view, uh, wide field view of the night sky. Uh, the third thing you want to consider is, yeah, you can see it here. I can throw uh, an apochromatic refractor up in the air, so they are pretty lightweight. They also don't require any maintenance. And especially when you want to travel and you want to set up a, a scope, that's pre pretty easy to take it with you. It's pretty portable 
easy to set up, easy to use. So all in all, I would advise you to, yeah, to buy an apochromatic refractor to start your astrophotography hobby with. Um, I have an entire video dedicated on what kind of apochromatic refractors, but also Newtonian telescopes are available on the astrophotography market that you might want to consider uh, to start your astrophotography hobby. So I will also link to that video in the description below. Question of the day. What kind of tips do you have for beginning astrophotographers? Please leave your tips in the comment section below so we can help beginning astrophotographers out. Or alternatively, if you are a beginning astrophotographer and you have some questions, leave your questions in the comment section below so we can help each other out. Thanks! So the third beginner tip I have for you is to start your astrophotography with... Let's uh, get it right here. Your regular DSLR camera. So the most obvious advantage is that you probably already own a DSLR camera like this one. So uh, instead of buying a new camera, you can just use your existing DSLR. You just remove the lens and you need something that is called a T2 adapter ring. They are available for most brands. Uh, they are around $20 only. And this allows you to connect your DSLR camera to your telescope and you can start imaging objects in the night sky. So that's pretty good. Um, there are two main disadvantages I want to inform you about when using a DSLR camera. The first one is that your DSLR camera, it comes with an IR cut filter, an infrared cut filter. And you might want to consider uh, removing that filter from your DSLR camera yourself, or maybe ask an expert to do that for you. Um, main reason is that there are a lot of nebulae in deep space. They are pretty awesome to image but they emit light uh, in the red part of the light spectrum close to the infrared. So yeah, by removing that IR cut filter from your DSLR, you are able to actually capture that faint light coming from deep space of those awesome objects. The second disadvantage is that your camera doesn't have any kind of cooling system. So just think about it, you're going to take multi-minute pictures of deep sky objects because this is pretty faint light so we need multi-minute exposures to capture that light and this will introduce noise in your picture because your camera sensor tends to heat up and then it will produce noise in your picture. Well, there are all kinds of techniques to like, uh, yeah, elim not eliminate but reduce that kind of noise. Uh, for instance, you can dither. Dithering just means that you slightly reposition your telescope every time you take a picture of a deep sky object. And you can take so-called composition frames. I'm not getting into that right now, but uh, there are all kinds of techniques to like reduce the noise in your picture. But you will still end up with some noise in your astrophotography pictures. And that's when you want to consider uh, buying a dedicated astrophotography camera that actually includes cooling. So let me also quickly show you a dedicated astrophotography camera that actually includes a cooling system. So this camera has a Pelche cooler with a ventilator and this allows you actually to cool the camera sensor down to minus 25 degrees, minus 20 degrees below ambient temperature. So when I take pictures using this camera, I cool my camera sensor down to about minus 15 degrees Celsius, sometimes even minus 20 degrees Celsius. And this allows you to eliminate a lot of the read noise you would otherwise get uh, when taking multi-minute uh, exposures of the night sky. Now I have a separate video again <laughs> on what kind of planetary cameras and cameras for deep sky astrophotography are excellent to perform astrophotography and I will link to that video in the description below. So the fourth beginner tip I have for you and maybe this is not a beginner tip anymore is to learn how to auto guide. Let me elaborate a little bit on that. So the equatorial mounts I have mentioned in the first tip, those mounts are mostly able to track objects in the night sky with great precision for about 30 to 60 seconds. When you want to go beyond that limit, uh, a lot of those mounts, especially the cheaper beginner level astrophotography mounts, they will start to show some inaccuracies in their tracking. And those inaccuracies, inaccuracies they actually translate into blurry pictures 
oval stars, maybe even star trails, and you don't want that. So when you're going to take multi-minute pictures of deep sky objects, you can help the mound actually by also buying some tracking gear. And what is tracking gear? Well, that's this. So you can see here I have a small secondary telescope and a camera attached to that telescope. And you can actually mount that onto your main scope and your main camera you're going to use for your, uh, for your imaging session. And once you are tracking that deep sky object in the night sky, this secondary camera and the secondary telescope, you can focus that on a particular star that is close to the object you, object you want to image. You can actually use a software tool that is called PhD2 Guiding. And PhD2 Guiding will simply take one second pictures of that star. And when that star moves a little bit up or down or left or right, right PhD2 Guiding can actually send corrections to your mount via USB cable. And your mount will then keep that star perfectly centered in the field of view. And this will actually allow you to take longer exposure pictures. So you will go from taking 30 to 60 second pictures to taking five minute or 10 minute pictures even of the night sky. So the fifth beginner tip I have for you is to learn how to polar align your mount like a pro. And polar alignment basically means that you will align your equatorial mount to either the north celestial pole when you are in the northern hemisphere or the south celestial pole when you're in the southern hemisphere. And yeah, these north and south celestial poles, they are actually imaginary points in the night sky that intersect with the axis of the Earth's rotation. So the more accurately you are able to polar align your mount with either the north or the south celestial pole, uh, the more accurate your equatorial mount will track objects in the night sky. So it's pretty important. And I have actually a separate video on how to manually polar align your mount to either the north or the south celestial pole. And I also show you what kind of software you can use to actually nail your polar alignment like a pro. So I will link to that video in the video description below. So the sixth more advanced tip I wanted to give you is learn how to play solve your images to find objects in the night sky. And this is actually an advanced tip uh, guys and girls. So I hope you bear with me because it can save you a lot of time when you are successful implementing this. Uh, let, me sh let me elaborate on it a little bit. So when you buy your first equatorial mount, it probably comes with oh wait a minute it probably comes with a hand controller and the hand controller is basically a mini computer you can connect it to your mount and uh, yeah this hand controller has a database with yeah more than 40,000 objects stored in its database so it can find basically any object you're interested in imaging in the night sky and what you do is you put in your loca location, you put in the time and the date of your imaging session, uh, you go through something that is called the star align procedure, um, and after that you can use this hand controller to slew to any object in the night sky. So it, the, you will type in the Andromeda galaxy, the Pleiades, and your mount will slew to that object and it will start tracking that object. But then something happens. So, you want then, of course, to image that object, but often you notice that, yeah, that object is not completely in the center of the field of view, or sometimes even the object is still a little bit outside of the field of view, and then you have to search for that object. And sometimes it takes 15 or 20 minutes. It can be pretty frustrating to find the deep sky object you want to image. Well, plate solving solves that issue. So plate solving is actually a software tool that you can use. So you can connect your mount to your computer and you can download all the star charts you need on your computer. And then you can use software tools such as uh, Astrophotography Tool or I am using Sequence Generator Pro. Um, and what then happens is that your mount uh, is instructed by the computer uh, to take a 10 second picture of the object that you want to image. Now, it downloads uh, the image and then it can actually compare the stars that are in your image to the star charts it has, has stored in its database. And it will just notice that when your mount is a little bit off or to the left or off to the right, um, um, it sa can send corrections to your mount uh, and it can put the deep sky object that you want to image 
in the center, dead center of your field of view. So I have, of course, a separate video again, sorry for that, <laughs> where I explain how you can actually set up plate solving in Sequence Generator Pro. And I know this is advanced, but I wanted to get, get it out there because it really can save you a lot of time uh, when you start your imaging session and you're trying to find objects in the night sky. So let's get on to that final tip. So the seventh and final tip I wanted to give you is you should learn how to stack and process your images. And I'm laughing a little bit because I cannot possibly cover this topic in just one single tip. So instead, just let me give you a general overview and let's compare it to normal photography. So with normal photography, you're going to take a, yeah, also multiple pictures of an object or a situation. And of course, you're going to select a picture or maybe one or two or three pictures you like most. And you're going to edit those pictures further in Photoshop. Maybe you blend them together a little bit. And then you have your end result and you post that on Instagram, right? Um, well, welcome to astrophotography because we do things a little bit differently. We're trying to capture faint light coming from deep sky objects. So obviously because we are, uh, we are trying to capture that light during the night, we are going to take long exposure pictures. So three minute, five minute pictures or even longer. Uh, this is nothing out of the ordinary. Now, second of all, what you should take into account is we're not going to take one, two or three pictures. We're going to take 10, 20, 30, 50 pictures of the same deep sky object. Uh, let's say we're going to take 35 minute pictures of a deep sky object. Uh, then we end up with a total integration time, as we call it, of 150 minutes. And these 30 pictures, of course, first we're going to look at the quality of each of those pictures. And then we're going to select the pictures we like most. And then we're going to stack those pictures using particular software tools. So here's my first tip when you're going to align and stack your images you might want to look for a program that is called Deep Sky Stacker. A lot of people start out using Deep Sky Stacker to align and stack their images. And then you will end up with an integrated image of your Deep Sky object. So all of the information of all of the pictures are combined. You get an integrated image. And that integrated image is often further edited and uh, processed. Uh, and many people use Photoshop for this. But uh, when you're an advanced astrophotographer, most of them, they will switch to PixInsight, another software tool to edit your, uh, your pictures and also actually to stack your pictures. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. There are a lot of resources. Look at my channel when you're interested in some tutorials on how to use Photoshop and Deep Sky Stacker. Um, there's a, another channel, the Astro Imaging channel, for instance, is very interesting because a lot of advanced astrophotographers explain how they edit and process their pictures. So check that channel out. So I hope these tips were useful, especially for those of you who are considering to start their astrophotography hobby. And I want to leave you with one thought, and that is you have to think about astrophotography as running a marathon and not running a sprint. Just consider the, all the things that you have to learn. You have to learn how to set up your equipment, how to find and track objects in the night sky, how to image those objects, how to stack and process those images. And each of those steps, they take a considerable amount of time to master. So yeah, don't hit yourself over the head when something goes wrong. Uh, we have all been there. So sometimes you set up your equipment, but you cannot connect your computer to your mount, for instance. Or sometimes when you finally are ready to image, clouds roll in and it completely ruins your astrophotography night. Uh, all these things are part of the game, I would say. And this makes it all the more challenging and all the more satisfying uh, when you finally have mastered all of these steps and when you finally are able to have a perfect clear night and you collect your data and you end up with a wonderful picture of a deep sky object. So yeah, if you like this kind of information, if you like astrophotography, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the button on the bottom right of the screen, of course. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again in one of my other videos. And until then, I want to wish you Clear skies. Bye-bye.